four weeks orientation program. All participants, academicians, and staff. Today is the eleventh day of four weeks orientation program, and the topic for today is use of data analysis for current scenario. The time scheduled for today's session is from 11 a.m. to 12 noon IST. Mr. Abhishek Yadav sir will be the eminent speaker for today's session. Now, we will be going to have brief details of profile of Mr. Abhishek Yadav. Presently, he is serving as senior business analyst at K-Force, University of South Florida, Miami, Florida, USA. He is a MBA professional. His specialized areas of study includes the following. Data analytics, business intelligence, interpreting the data, analyzing the data to have successful business solutions, helping higher management to make key business decisions. Mr. Mr. Avisek Yadav is an expert and proficient in the following areas. Statistics, analytics, data mining. He is having excellent understanding of business operation and data analytics tool. In addition, he is also having hands-on expertise for the following. Tableau, Power BI, MS Access, JIRA, SQL, Waterfall, Google Analytics, Google Ads, Google Data Studies, Oracle, Tag, Manager and Python. He is having best skills for the following a strong project management, communication, multitasking skills. He is having experience in the following high paced fintech environment with comprehensive knowledge of payments and banking ecosystem. Moreover, Mr. Avisek Yadav sir is having the following properties, leadership, team building, collaborative relationships, project management, data and marketing analytics, business process improvement, business intelligence, agile and scrum. With these words, now I invite Mr. Abhishek Yadav sir to take over this session as we are now waiting for his magnificent lecture on the topic. Sir, Mr. Abhishek Yadav sir, please. Hi everyone. Thank you Hi. sir for the great introduction, elaborate introduction. Um, it's a pleasure to meet you all here. Um, and, uh, it's a great experience for me and I'm sure for all of you to, you know, connect this way and share our ideas. Uh, always good to you know, share some ideas and also you know, learn some from anyone you know, I can. So I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, so yeah, data analytics. Uh, uh, I I think all of you guys are you know uh, in the research uh, environment PhD students and I'm not uh, aware of you know I'm not talking about each and everyone but I think everyone is kind of involved in the research and PhD courses and and all like that so I would uh, like to kind of give you give you a brief uh, you know description about how you can utilize data. And you know what you know data takes means and how it can be beneficial uh, in your research and any other uh, you know 
you know direction you guys you know would go in future and or, or planning to work in current uh, work on currently so yeah data is basically you know uh, don't want to get very you know technical uh, you know in the details but data basically you know just facts so you, i know in research facts are of a great importance uh, you know facts make you know, give your research some kind of credibility and you know give some strength to the research so uh, it's always great to you know collect some facts about whatever topics you are uh, you are you know doing your phd program in or you know if you are really passionate about some uh, some ideas that you are exploring so i would just say you know uh, include in those facts those numbers and try and strengthen the give some substance to your your topic um data analytics nowadays is is the most prominent field uh, i'm personally very uh, passionate about it because it's it's uh, you can use it in any any thing you you're working on you can use it in business you can you can use it in research you can we use it in our daily life every decision we make we you know by our intellect we we collect information from all around from the environment we are in and then we analyze that in our minds and we make a decision so it's basically the same process is just you know if you're working in a business you have to make a decision you need to collect you know the data uh, to solve that problem and once you have that data you try to analyze that data in, you know uh, towards your goal and then you know come up with uh many different strategies that you might use and i think uh, nowadays it's very hard for any i'm not talking about small business i mean small businesses are still running on you know uh, gut feeling and you know their instincts but it's really hard for a business to sustain and you know compete in today's market without having uh, good data because everyone is using data in one way or the other so uh for example uh i would say if you're running like a <clears throat> uh, just say pastry shop or something for example you you would get uh customer orders there's a way you can you know collect the orders the amount of orders which pastries are you selling more what flavors are you selling how much are the customers paying for these pastries and then you know uh, what's the, what time are you getting what orders so you will get this basic information through your pos devices in the restaurant all so that's like the primary data you will have you can also go out in the market and collect some data about people living around your area what's their income level what demographic they are and then you know uh, use all of that towards you know anything you might think would be handy for your business you know you want to know what your customers are what people you are serving what kind of flavors they like if they don't like this if you are selling less of something you see in your analysis that you are um, not selling as much strawberry flavor pastries you might want to take that out of your menu and add something else this is a very like lame an example but you know just want to get my point through how how data can be used in a very small business and you know big corporations are definitely using it in many different ways uh, i think and uh, one thing about data like i can go, go very deep in technicalities how you can analyze data but i think anyone can use data you know basic excel you know analysis there are many different models you can generate in excel it's just uh, you don't have to know how to code and everything you know don't people get scared when you talk about data science and you talk about software engineering people get scared about you know oh you have to code and you know maybe it's not for me and but basically you have to collect the it may be research it might be just general life uh, you know issue that you know you're trying to solve something you just need to collect that information and you need to find a way to analyze that you know you can do machine learning modeling ai mod you know predictive uh, modeling uh, but that's you know 
you can always if you are passionate about that field you can always keep learning and keep growing and you know increasing your skill level but i think everyone should in in uh, in start you know use data for their benefit because it it can really provide you some substance and some uh, good decision making uh, think think of it is in that way that you are you want to make a decision it can, can be like a 50 50 gamble but if you include some kind of data uh, that gives you some you know facts about so you some level of certainty about something you can make a decision 70 30 so that's the 20% in your side that you are sure that you know what you're going to do is is going to work so it's just reduction of that probability of loss that uh, you know minimizing this that's all business is about you know uh, so uh, i'm talking about research uh, on the research side i think uh, the most common mistake what people sometimes do you know unintentionally or, or you know sometimes with the intentions as well but is you collect data the way you want to or the problem you are solving to you were you working towards the end goal and you you manipulate the data gets manipulated because you know you were not having an open mind towards it so i i would say i would recommend everyone to if you have a research that you're doing you should uh, collect the data that you need for that research and analyze it towards what whatever you're trying to prove but not with an unbiased mind you know it's not like you have uh, you have a theory about something you have a hypothesis and you want to prove that so you don't have to push the data to tell you the same story it can be it can be different you know it might not be the same your hypothesis can be wrong so i would say let the data guide you let the facts guide you on what the outcome is and not dictate uh, you know the data collection your analysis towards the outcome that that's a mistake that happens very often not even not just in research but even in business uh, you have a gut instinct in your mind but can you really were passionate about that idea and you want to prove that and in that process you sometimes ignore some facts or you sometimes don't do the analysis with an open mind and you know keeping just facts in there and and you're just working on that analysis and seeing where it takes you it might give you some great even better idea you know uh, i don't know how many of you have heard of the concept of serendipity serendipity is something like you are looking for something and then you stumble upon something better that you were not even expecting so it's it's that kind of uh, approach i think it's very beneficial you are exploring one idea you might be right about it you might not be right about it but <clears throat> but in that process you might stumble upon something better which can and businesses in general always start with the idea but they pivot along uh, they pivot uh, you know they 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 start with the idea they use the data they do and they figure out oh this idea is okay but you know, the base is okay but this not particularly align exactly how i thought and then they small make small changes towards that they change their strategies and the product you start with one product in mind and you end up making something similar but, but you know you can say not exactly what you thought and that can be the product that can give you the value back of in your investment so you have to be in research in business you have to be open mind flexible with your approach let the data guide you let it tell you the, the exact story and then you can then you can you know make your decision if you think this is what something you know works with in your case or you want to explore some more ideas or you may want to tweak your research a little bit so i would i would encourage everyone uh, you know to work towards that goal and uh, and you know coding wise i would say 
if you are really passionate about data you know you can start with basic you know sql <clears throat> sql is just a you know querying language which is very you know simple you can start with that and then once you have that you can you know easily collect data you can query data from databases and then you can build up on that you know python and there's many more languages that you can learn but uh, and i'm not and anyone can you know learn today is like a skill based market everywhere so you know if passion about something if you know about something you don't don't even need a kind of degree to work in that field if you're skillful enough you people would would love to get your knowledge from you or how you pay you for your your knowledge so <clears throat> i would encourage everyone to if you're passionate about in any field and you know, especially in data keep exploring you know keep learning and and keep make, that will benefit you in your research as well that will benefit you in your whatever you know in future if you're planning to do any business or are you currently working for an organization and you can bring better ideas you can bring better analysis uh, for to the to the leadership uh, that can definitely benefit you and and you know make you progress in your in your career uh analysis wise uh, i want to talk a little bit about analysis so there are like three kinds of analysis uh, that uh, the one is descriptive analysis and, uh, one is uh, predictive and then the one is prescriptive so these are different levels uh, descriptive analysis is just basically you collect some data and then you describe that data using any tool you can use tableau power bi you can generate some kind of graphics to to read that data and to also present that you know what whatever idea that data is suggesting you can present that further so tableau power bi click these are some of the tools that are you know really good in visualization you know, you know just in a raw form it's hard to understand and 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 see what story it's trying to tell you but when you put it on a board it's nice based on your your you know end goal it you get the whole whole picture and you get the whole story and and that way it's easier to read it's easier to build strategies on that uh, question, you know i'm i'm not sure how many of you are you know into or passionate about that but if you are interested in just you know go on youtube search about power bi tableau click some of these and and try to learn these it's not that hard and you know you can even get like a student license for them for free for the basic version and you can you know try some some of your data that you're using and your research on that and you know create some nice presentation that you can also put in your your thesis that you are working on for your phd so so try that and 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 see if it helps you uh, make your um, you know thesis or for a PhD goal better you can achieve some some better concrete uh, you know ideas or or uh, in your PhD uh, and present that and make the stuff you're working on all to get you know more ideas and and, and better you know uh, strategy or you know, whatever you know it's beneficial um and so descriptive is just taking the data and just explaining it you know describing it in the present form in the possible zone then there comes uh, predictive which predicts the future so you can collect data today you have this amount of sale or today you have this situation you know you can take population today we have this number of population by the let's predict how much population you're going to have or how much sales you you're going to generate in the same if you keep working on the same path they can tell you they can predict okay you know if you keep going on this trade we will use you're going to burn on stuff like that just few examples to, to tell you 
Uh, so that's predictive. That will predict you for whatever X amount of years you want to see, or a few months. Maybe next week, you know, you're working on the short term goals. You can predict, okay, today, last, I'm seeing this pattern in my data for last, uh, you know, few months we, on a weekly basis. Uh, so, so what, what can I, you know, kind of, uh, um, how do you say that? What can I kind of predict or what, what, what can I expect? You know, how is it going up or down? You can, you can create those kind of um, analysis and then, and the last one, that's the stage, you know, perspective. and uh, last stage would be prescriptive. The, the data will tell you. You have to do this to be able to achieve your end goal. So imagine. That, okay, I want to maybe. I'm building a tool or I'm in my PhD thesis, I'm suggesting a tool to okay, if you do this, if we do things this way, this will be the outcome. And you have to show that. So okay, here by the way, things are looking, this will happen. So you have to make a change or you have to tweak something right now if you, want, if you want to get there uh, to give you a general business example of prescriptive analysis uh, uh, imagine i'm so basic i'm working for i work for uh, consulting five people and we put them uh, you know on on projects for for some bigger companies or any company that needs employment but they don't have the resources to, to recruit in-house. We do that job for them. So we have this whole data about projects. When, when is their project expiring? So the, the, predict, the prescriptive analysis would tell us, okay, in next 30 days, this guy's project is a certification that you need to start finding. Uh, uh, placement for these guys for the next project, you know, because right when the project ends, he won't have a job and for his, uh, you know, expenditures. So, so you have, have to know beforehand, okay, when are these ending? So the tools are built in that way that they will just push a notification looking for jobs for this person. He, he, these are his uh, specialization. This is the field he likes to work in. And these are the companies that are, you know, seeking. So you, so you go there, you go and you start looking and, you know, next 15, 20 days, you find that person in his next project, so as soon as his project ends. So that's kind of, you know, prescriptive analysis that is also happening right now. And that's, You have built all those models and all those, uh, you know, metrics that the data uh, as it comes in from the sources, the it tells you on a click of a button or even even not a click because it's already inbuilt. So as the data sends that notification and people get on their job. Jobs and they can reach. Um, but to start with, I would just thank you, everyone, to just you know include that field for yourself, research for your ideas or any business you want to start for yourself. You need to pick up, try to see what problem you are trying to solve and uh, so uh, and and just as i mentioned cleaning that is also very important so if you can raw data in your models and it will give you the right analysis
this is a lot of mistakes also happen on this basis people get out in data you know and to give you to a small example but a lot of people you know experts in the field missed the basics of not having null values in your data completely different picture than what you, what you should what's the right uh, it will show you complete picture it will you will make strategies on that and that makes businesses fail even if you make a mistake they that sometimes don't feed the right data and then those are layers set up in their environment where uh, they and they take and they they refine it and 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 get the right strategies you know on that so um, i would encourage the kind of in the system to right results uh yeah so there's just a saying that i always mention that in you know yeah for the most thing in data analysis field if you push garbage in a system hello so sorry for the interruption yeah so can you guys hear me yes sir yes sir we can hear you sir please go okay. ahead okay so yeah i will i'm yeah so uh, i was saying sorry for the interruption uh, yeah basically that's uh, all i had to share uh, i would love to hear from everyone you know get their feedback or any questions you have i would you know love to you know have some interaction with everyone and and you know see if, if i can you know explain something or learn from from some of you so please if you have any questions please Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. A very nice and knowledgeable knowledgeable lecture indeed on the subject. On and on behalf of the organizing committee, I am I am very much thankful to you, um, Mr. Yadav sir. Now at this hour, all the participants and and uh, academicians who uh, who are joined now, they can put queries if they are having, and they and their queries will be solved by. uh
our eminent speaker, sir. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Any participants who want to put any query, they are most welcome. So I think some people are putting the queries in the in the comments. Can if anyone can, you know, ask some of those, I can I can respond to that. And then just to some of the performance maybe a bit so I'm having some internet issues I'm trying to look the look on look up the comments. I think stop my video because it's taking too much of my internet and it's lagging a little bit. One second. Yes, so go down. I <clears throat> why is data analysis important someone asked <clears throat> so as i explained it uh, just makes your odds better to you know give some substance to your research if you talk about research in, in the research environment if you talk about business environment it makes your risk lower it lowers your risk minimizes your risk makes you you know gives you some input to to make your strategies and and may and, you know helps you make right decisions more you know more than you know what we what you would make without data just based on your gut feeling you know you might make five out of six, uh, four out of six decisions correct and two wrong. If you use data, you might end up making five right decisions and that, that you know, increasing that, that, you know, accuracy and that percentage increase would, can give you big benefits. You know, each time you make one more right decision, you, you create something better. You, <clears throat> you produce something, uh, the whatever you know your thesis or, or or your your business solutions is going going to be better than what it would be without data. So it's it's a very good add on, you know. I'm sure I'm not saying that instinct doesn't matter. Instinct is also 
you know, there's, or there's always a human component in, in analyzing data and, you know, how you can make a strategy based on that. So that is also very important, but, you know, having the right data and that analysis in front of you also helps you to, to think and strategize. So, so I would say that this is a very important add-on in today's environment because we have so much abund abundance of data. You know, if you have so much data, there's so many sources, so many tools to collect data. You know, even your mobile phone has so much data, even any, any all these software tools that you're using now, have, all of them are built on data. You know, some of them are pushing data out, some of them are sourcing data. So let's say your your phone, when it gives you notification, this the, the message you send, it goes somewhere and then that server that database that's on the same server that pushes that message to your phone or you know the iCloud is is a big you know cloud storage where you all your pictures that you take on your iPhone or any you know any on Android you have the, the Google Cloud. these are just you know they have big servers that are housed in one center you know for Google or for for Apple but they're also databases that are ran on those big servers you know they just the kind of servers that you can access to the internet, but you can also have like a single server in your house and then use that to build your own database. So, you know, this is, this, there are, you know, you can go as big as you want, you know, the companies are doing you know, bigger things and they're using, you know, providing us cloud services to, you can just go on uh, Google AWS uh, cloud and then you can just buy some of their servers for a very cheap, price you know you don't even have to build that whole structure inside wherever in your company or in your, at your business place or at your house you know whatever you know for scientists they can just they can just borrow they can loan some of their, their cloud storage and they can just you know turn it off turn it on whenever they, they need so you have all these tools and you have all so much data that you know is out there for you so if you, if that can make your life easier, that can help you make sound decisions, then why not? You know, always good to, to do that. Okay, I hope I answered that one uh, for whoever asked this one. Okay, any specific area where we go ahead for research in data analysis? Uh, I, I don't know how to answer this one because it's a very broad question. It just, uh, whatever research, I don't know what research topics you guys are working on, but whatever research topic you have, you know, if you're trying to, to work on a research to provide a, a better solution for some of the problems in the current scenario, or, you know, some better tool or, you know, some government services, you know, I don't know what, but, but in the same field, you know, whatever field you're passionate about, try to gather some information about that field, put it on a, an Excel file or any, you know, and then see if you can see some patterns in that. That's the most basic analysis you can do, you know, put some numbers on the chat on the, and, you know, maybe you can also create charts and, and, and stuff on and even Excel. You don't even need to go Tableau Power BI. Try to create some of those, those visualization and, and see what that information is telling you. You might see a pattern that will help you, guide you, in your research, you know, make you able to present your point better, or, or maybe you you stumble upon uh, something that's you weren't even thinking about, but now it becomes an integral part of your your research and your your whole product that you are trying to present. So whatever field you're passionate about, go go in the depth. You know, see wherever you can even collect like data from government websites. You know, census. Every government provides you some open sources where you can just just collect data for a minimal fee or sometimes some portals are even open. So, you know, go on that. If you are trying to open a business, see what businesses are in competition in your area. You know, you can go on the MCA website and see their financials, their balance sheets, get their revenue numbers, get their marketing numbers, you know, how much sales they are generating. How is it progressing through the years? And then see 
make your own projections that you know if you invest this much money and if if this is the outcome average outcome for all the businesses in that area then what what value is your business going to generate and are you when are you going to break even on your investment and start making some some gains some profits so just a business example i'm i'm, I'm you know a research they can be any topic so i'm no i don't know which research any everyone of you is working on i'm sure you have some great ideas and some great topics that you know might help solve uh, you know problems and and create better environment for everyone you know for 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 general public for government services for any any other any other departments you know but, but i more more and more on a day to day basis you know work on business problems and business so that's why i'm giving some some business examples so so but but these apply on on any other you know these apply on research or any other field the same way they apply on business basically it's a problem solving game you have a problem in front of you you want to solve that or you have a business problem you want to solve that or you have a a research problem issue or you want to solve you need to collect some information analyze and, and create some strategies that's that's as simple as as it gets okay so how can we start business i think i answered that you know first thing is you need to how can we start business okay first thing you want to know what what business you're interested in you know you need to be passionate about that you need to have your idea to start with that this is something i envision myself doing or this is something i am really interested in um, i think to start a business you need to identify a problem a gap in the market you you go in your local market and and you know you realize this is something that should be there but it's not available or this is something i would uh, love to pay pay for and have the service or this product but i don't have it available anywhere and sometimes it's just us thinking that oh i like that so i i would pay you know few rupees for for that thing and it would be a nice thing to have but I, some it's not maybe not everyone wants to pay that money for that product so you need to realize that it's not just you uh, who you know wants that brings value to that product uh, everyone else sees some value and are willing to pay some money for that product if that's the case then you go in that business and then you start your market research about you know what competitors if there are no competitors that's the best state to be you know you can be the first one in the market for something and that gives you that that added advantage of first comer advantage and if there is competition and you you can if you think you can make your product at least like 10 times if not 10 5 at least at five times better than what's currently in the market then you should go in the in the business if you don't think you can you're going to make it like one time two time better then it's not going to give you you're not going to generate that much profit because you know when they where there is a lot of competition the margins get really low so i would recommend going in a business where you can build your monopoly or you can you can you have something 10 times better than the current product in the market go with that and and you can always create a monopoly and get bigger margins that's where the the bigger money the bigger money is so if you, if if you are not able to create like at least 5 6 times better product then just wait and find something else that you know if you really just want to do some business and you you have a business mindset wait for the right product wait for the right idea uh but once you are sure that okay this is something that i can i can bring and people would love like it it has some value and people would love to pay some money for it then go in go full on in that idea and and do your research analyze all the market data see how you can beat the competition see how you can you know build your pricing strategies or your you know sourcing strategy wherever you can bring some edge to that that idea 
use use data analysis and you know data to help you guide through that okay well, what is the use to outlier in the data analysis so outlier is basically you need to identify outliers to there is no use for outlier but outlier can sometimes screw your uh, skew your analysis they can there is some some outlier in data that is showing you a different projection but that's just one exception case but that can screw uh, skew your whole graph that can skew your whole analysis so the best the you should not have outliers but but generally that's not the case in real world scenarios so when you have outliers it's you should work on identifying those and taking that them out or segregating that from your from your main data so you can see the actual picture and you can see okay i might have few exceptions in in this but if i don't have those exceptions if i see a general you know data or the general average then this should be my outcome so uh, identification of outlier is very useful not per se the outlier <clears throat> which computer language is important in business analysis so business analyst is more of a i would say hands off profile than you know data analyst you know i've worked in data science data analytics but now i i manage those projects so i'm more hands off so it's more you know close to project management but you know so you should know basic like sql or some gen, you know beginner level python or something like that if you work in a software engineering company or something like that but uh, you should uh, for business analysis i would say jira confluence uh uh azure devops these are some of the project management tools that companies use to and the business analyst is is mostly working on that but you know he should be able to understand the product the software the company is building the tools or the databases hello sorry uh okay sir uh, I think uh, the answers to the queries were uh, explainable itself. And uh, with this, now we come to the end of the session, of this session. And uh, I would like to thank Dr. Avishek Yadav, sir, uh, for such an explanatory answers to all the queries. And uh, I would also li uh, like to thank all the participants, academicians, and staff uh, for joining us. and. Uh, that's okay. We will be meeting uh, to our next day hours. Baba Masna Jai That is okay. Thank you very much to all.